Hello everyone, welcome back to Antique and Garden Showcase. I'm Mark and glad that you are here. Today we're just kind of, uh, the plans I had for this video kind of really went down the tubes early. I uh, started to go out to look for uh, some natural stone to finish working on the walkway and the kitchen garden. I was trying to put in a step uh, between the walkway and the uh, deck stairs there. I was looking for a 12 by 24 rock thought I had the perfect place in mind and they were just like, I mean, they shot down every idea and, and didn't really want to help with anything they had. So I'm like, well, we'll look elsewhere. And I went to an auction preview today and that was chaotic. It was just full of people, lots of loud noise. And it was almost impossible to videotape, but I did find some things that may be coming up soon in the booth. And also I took a little road trip to another, um, vintage location to try to find a few things. And I ended up finding um, a crate's worth of pottery, different U.S. potteries, some regional, some not so regional, and uh, that's going to be headed towards the booth on Monday, probably, if not tomorrow. So having said that, you know, I focused on this lawn a lot, and if you can see behind me back here, the hillside, I've had a lot of spots in the lawn that I have killed out. I've had invasive zoysia grass everywhere around here. And of course, with a fescue lawn, what's gonna happen is the minute we get a frost or freeze coming up, you know, in the end of October, 1st of November, all of that grass is going to look like that back there. It's all gonna turn straw brown in the middle of green grass because the fescue will stay green even in the cold weather. So, but the zoysia will not. So that's why I'm trying to take care of this now, get it reseeded so it will have a nice consistent green look all the way across the lawn. So I'm gonna take you up here, I'm gonna show you the preparation that I put together for that little area. So the first step that I did was I took a hand rake and I tried to rake out as much of this thatch and I didn't get all of it, but as much of the dead thatch of the zoysia grass as I can. This is dead, it's done. It will not hurt if it stays here, other than it might just smother out the new grass some, but I tried to get as much out as I possibly could. This was just one area I left so you could kind of see. Up here, I got more of it out. And what I did was I took a bucket. There was a stay green lawn soil that I found, this darker soil that you see right here, and I mixed my grass seed in with it. And I raked that in on top of the dead patches. That way it gives a little boost, a little boost start to the seed. And then I top coated that with, uh, this is what's called easy straw. And that's literally capital E dash letter Z straw. And what's different from this is that it, it's seed free. It doesn't have seeds like wheat straw and it has a built-in adhesive, kind of like a little bit of a tackiness. So when it gets wet, it sticks together ever so slightly to keep it from eroding uh, away, which is one thing you wanna do because I'm on this hillside, as you can see, that's the driveway island up there and I'm way down here. So this is an area that if it rains real hard, this would erode. So that's a precautionary thing I took down here. I did this area first because I really wanted to get it established before uh, taking on some of those other spots that are up on the top of the hill. So easy straw on top and a few days, I've been hand watering this just with a sprinkler can at night, these little areas to try to get them to come back in. And I don't think it'll take too long because the weather's still warm, the seeds should germinate fine. And then this hill will be all repaired. So it had a great big patch in there, as you can see. So there was a lot of repair needed right there. It's gonna be a lot of repair on top of the hill. And as we pan around here, as I was telling you the other day, you can see the frostiness, all this grass from here all the way down to the bottom of the hill, all zoysia. Now, the other day I was watching Laura on Garden Answer, and you all know that I love Laura on Garden Answer. It's a daily watch for me too. And I was fascinated when she did the uh, potting shed in her yard there, um, the um, meadow, the grass seed that she used was a rhizotomus fescue and it was for shade and for sunlight. Well, you can see this is dappled in sunlight, but mostly shade. There's a lot of tree canopy down here that shades. This 
lower portion down here is a creek right about where my finger's at in these two trees on the opposite side of the fence. There's a little cave where the water runs down in and then it goes down behind my neighbor's house and it pops up somewhere down in here and then stream goes on out and eventually makes it to the Kentucky River. But this is kind of where that little stream starts. Anyway, there's a lot of water. There's a lot of runoff down through here and a lot of shade. So that's a combination for no grass growth a lot of times. So I was fascinated by that seed choice she used. I thought maybe that would be a good choice here because I'm going to have to, like I said, large patches are going here, starting right here. You can just see it everywhere. The closer you get, the more you can tell the whole hillside's covered in it. So big major job right here. But I think I'm gonna try Laura's Rhizotomus tall fescue in this area. Just limit it to this side and see what happens. And as for the rest of the yard, I think it's time that things are gonna start getting cleaned out. Probably after you're watching this video on Saturday, I'm gonna be out here taking some things apart. These are done. The grasses are actually looking pale even though they're getting water every day. Things are just, they're done for. I was talking to a guy while I was at the booth today and he was like, you know, we just can't escape the extremes around here this year. He's like, yeah, I'm done. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. I mean, everything's looking toasty. Even the, the um, large caladium there, you can see there's a lot of dead leaves and there it's still on drip it's still getting watered but it's just we're in another heat wave right now and a dry one at that we haven't had rain for almost two weeks again and uh, temperatures are up around the 90s the humidity is through the roof and these things have just worked themselves to death and they're just at their their end this one doesn't look too bad but uh, this other caladium down here i think i'm just going to go ahead and cut those leaves off and harvest those and put them in because this one's looking really languished from the heat and everything. I hear my shadows and everything because the sun's behind me tonight. But anyway, I'm going to start doing fall cleanup very, very soon. And I know it's, it's still pretty. There's a lot of pretty things out here and I won't tear everything out, but there are some things that just need to go. So an update on the booth space. The booth space is, is doing really, really well. I've uh, consistently said that uh, from day one and I'm pleasantly pleased with um, each day. I have really good sales, it seems like. And this month has turned out really well too. I just need to source more things. The things I'm looking for are garden items, especially that the garden items are selling like crazy. I get any type of vintage flower pot, it's gone. I get any type of, type of garden art, it's gone. Most of the time, within hours of me dropping it off, it's already sold. And I mean, it, it's a great problem to have, but it's also a problem to try to source and keep um, your themed items in there. So I'm trying to find auctions and things and estate sales and anything I can find that has um, those type things. And, you know, a lot of people are approaching me saying, hey, I have this for sale, have that for sale. You know, I like certain things and I like to look for certain things because I have a certain I guess a certain style that I want my booth to look like and uh, pretty much if if I would buy it for me I'll put it in that booth so that's kind of my philosophy of what I sell in there if if I would have it in my own space I'll put it there and that's most of the truth about 95% of the time sometimes you buy things uh, in large lots at auctions and you get items that you don't necessarily want and sometimes I'll mark those down on cheap and put them in there and you know, offer them up at really cheap prices. Other times if it's something that's minor damage or whatever I'll donate or some things I just don't want to deal with I donate and uh, get rid of them right away. But it's it's been a fun experience. I mean this is the end of the second month of having retail and it just gets more and more fun. So trying to get out and find things that's what I need more time to do. For the last part of this video, let's talk a little bit about regional pottery. We have a pottery or had a pottery around here called Bybee Pottery. And it's just a, you know, several miles down the road between uh, Richmond, Kentucky and Irvine, Kentucky in the little community of Bybee, Kentucky. And it's pretty much known across the United States. It has a look of its own and whatever else. So that's a famous regional pottery here. 
I know in other areas of the United States, like Rookwood, Roseville, there's there's tons of different ones. So, hey, chime in on the comments. Let me know what your favorite regional pottery is in your area. So I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna show you a few pieces that I've got in here. Um, first piece is a Bybee Pottery um, spackled pressed pitcher. Uh, I found this today while I was out shopping. I'm gonna put the pictures up on the screen of all these things. and. Uh, this is a piece I'm going to offer up for sale in the booth. I've had some other special pieces up there. I just sold a couple of spoon rests um, that I found. One was in a bird pattern that they did, and one was in a Christmas wreath pattern that uh, the Bybee Pottery did. And around here, this stuff is, you know, it's, it's the pottery of the area. So a lot of people collect it. A lot of people are looking for it. And I thought it would be worth making a mention on video since this is one thing that I do offer up in my booth whenever I can find it. And a lot of other vendors uh, love to sell the pottery. In fact, there's a guy uh, in the uh, same mini mall that used to work for the pottery for several years. And he sometimes filters out things out of his collection and puts them in there, which is really neat to look at and learn some of the history on those as well. So regional pottery, like I said, let me know what regional pottery in your area is the most famous. Well, I know this is gonna be a short one for the week. Um, like I said, a lot, of, a lot of factors played into that, but uh, anyway, I hope you all have had a good week and uh, maybe next week I can get into more things because I'm hoping I have an auction pickup and I'm gonna get into more of the fall cleanup around this yard and stuff too. So have a great week, visit the website, uh, www.antiqueandgardenshowcase.com that's in the comments below also the Facebook page address is in the comments below the address to um, uh, Antique and Garden Showcase the retail space at Chestnut Street Mini Mall in Berea, Kentucky is in the comments below and if you're coming through I-75 south or northbound through central Kentucky make sure you make that one of your stops it's right off exit 76 in Berea, Kentucky thanks for watching hope you've had a great week and don't forget to like and comment and subscribe to this channel. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good one. Bye.